And if they're devotees, we're fortunate. If they're not, then we move in another direction. That means we get captured by one of the modes of material nature. Krishna in the Bhagavad Gita explains that these three modes of material make up the entire activities of material energy. And to conclude that, he says, there's nothing beyond the modes. So as far as material life and the activities performed, everything is conducted by these three modes. The modes are they also be are synonymous with ropes. In fact, the word mode and the word rope, or guna, guna is the word for mode and for rope. So the, the, the modes bind one to a particular activity, and then by based on the activity, we get a certain result. And based on the activity and the result, we develop certain characteristics. So when we associate with the mode of passion, as Prabhupada makes the point here, which is the tendency of the conditioned souls in the material world, then we have a strong desire to be the controller. We want to control all aspects of existence. And therefore, we entangle ourselves in this false idea that we can control things. But ultimately, as Krishna says, Maya Daksena Prakriti Suyate Satchavacharam. Material work, world works under my direction. But he puts it in place for the, uh, for the purification of the living entity so they can detach themselves from these activities and ultimately come to the platform of devotional service. But within that context of activities, one is being pushed according to the results of their activities from side to side, which is motivated by their desires. You want to change your life, change your desires, but it's hard to change your desires. But therefore, one has to associate with, with that which brings about a change in desires. So if we want to become a devotee, we want to become a, a strong devotee, then uh, sadhu sangha, sadhu sangha, sadhu sasriva. And what is the result? Sadhu Sangha, Sadhu Siddhi Hoi, Sadhu Sangha, Sadhu. In other words, we actually become purified by our association. What is that purification? We're no longer influenced by the effects of the three modes of material nature. People in the material world think they're free simply because they can make choices in the way they perform their activity. But their choice automatically plugs them into a different particular type of mode which causes them to uh, act in a certain way and get a result accordingly. Therefore, in the material world, nobody is free. Of course, here it says the best of all modes is the mode of goodness. So what is the characteristic of the mode of goodness? It's more selfless, although it is not completely selfless. It is better than the other two modes. Therefore, for devotees, it says that one should move them or their consciousness up to the mode of goodness. And the mode of goodness means following religious principles and developing what is called saintly qualities, such as kindness, uh, tolerance, patience, humility, detachment from the results of one's activities. Um, many other qualities being unaffected by happiness and distress. So uh, as long as we are still acting within the lower modes, what is the lower modes? What is the characteristic of the lower mode that is prominent? We do something and we try to get a result from that. And everybody's geared towards that movement because that's how we are trained and that's how the material energy works. Because no one will do anything unless they can get something from the activity performed, either immediately or extended. Extended means in due course of time. Just like for instance, 
going to work is an extended aspect of the mode of passion. You don't get paid the same day you work. You have to wait till it comes at a certain point. But we work in, a, in the present, get paid in the future. That's an extended mode of passion. Just an example. So the whole material energy pretty much is governed by these two lower modes and mostly the mode of passion to work hard and get money and have a nice material arrangement based on the, the acquisition of some kind of pecuniary benefits. So that is the material energy and therefore everyone struggles and thinking that by arranging their life in such a way they can somehow or other overcome the difficulties and achieve their desired results. But the thing is, they don't know how the material energy works. And it is, even if you get a particular result, it binds you to the attachment of that result and it forces you to act in the same way. You can't get out. It's like a jail. There's just like you go into a jail and you'll see there's three categories of prisoners. And there are the, well, the mainstream prisoners, which is the, the, the large bulk of the inmates, and they, they will be considered in the mode of passion. And then you have the mode of, uh, then you have prisoners who are in solitary confinement because they misbehave even in jail. And they're put in a more restricted environment and they can they're very limited in what they can do. And so that would be considered analogous to the mode of ignorance. And then you have what is called the privileged prisoners, the ones that behave very nicely, and they become friendly, and they develop some friendship with the administration, and they're given extra privileges. They can even, you know, they have opportunities to go into the library and even have one. They also may be in charge of other inmates within the prison. Now, these are called the privileged prisoners. But you have to understand they're still in jail. So even in the mode of goodness, although the scriptures do encourage devotees to come to the mode of goodness, it's not the goal. The goal is ultimately transcendence or devotional service. But one can, it's very difficult and practically impossible to go from the mode of passion to transcendence, although it is possible, but very difficult because it is the qualities that are in characteristics of devotional service which are synonymous with the mode of goodness, not the mode of passion. <clears throat> the mode of passion is a hard struggle for gain. The mode of goodness is to develop certain qualities and activities that are considered what we say elevated human culture, such as poetry, music, art, uh, a taste for these things, giving in charity regularly, um, doing philanthropic work for people who are needy in society, opening hospitals, feeding the poor, clothing the needy, like that. These are all what we call philanthropic or pious activities. And, uh, but some people think, well, because I'm doing that, I'm successful. Even devotees think like that. You know, I'm a nice guy. <laughs> but nice guys finish last in Krishna consciousness. <laughs> you have to be, you have to be in contact with the real nice guy. That is Krishna. So that only comes when we use that higher mode to engage in devotional service. In other words, as Prabhupada says, one has to associate with persons who are above the three modes of material. In other words, those who are engaged fully in devotional service. We call them sadhus, we call them fixed devotees, ananyabhathas. Those who have understood that the three modes of material nature simply are different types of traps for the living entity become encased in a continuous struggle in order to achieve something that is eventually lost in, in due course of time. And of course, just to mention in the mode of ignorance, 
the mode of ignorance is destructive to oneself and to people in general. So, of course, devotees usually don't fall into the mode of ignorance, but sometimes it does happen. But we have to be very, and so therefore, what is the what is the way? Take good association. But what Prabhupada makes, he uses the word service. To associate means to serve. Not just to be in physical proximity. To be in a mode of serving, that is the actual way to associate. Because in that mode of activity, then we are actually performing what is beneficial or what is natural for the soul's existence. To, uh, to be in physical proximity, we, saw, we see that also. But it doesn't necessarily mean it's going to be beneficial. Prabhupada would use the example just like a, a fly may be sitting on the king, but does the fly associate with the king? No. <laughs> Although he's right there because there's no connection at all with the consciousness. So in the mood of service, we actually associate with devotees. And that's, that is the, of course, the mode of, that, that mode of service is, variegated, it could take out, it could be played out in different ways. But that is the element of consciousness. How can I serve in the association with the devotees? That is the mood. And when, when we think like that, Krishna always inspires us to serve in a certain way. Simply by that desire, Krishna will arrange for you to get an opportunity to serve. And so that, that association is Important. And of course, when you associate with great souls, you hear from them. And then this verse that was quoted by Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu Sadhu Sangha, Sadhu Sangha, Sarva Sastri Hoy, Lava Mata, Sadhu Sangha, Sarva Siddhi Hoy. That one more, Lava Mata, is an interesting terminology. It means one eleventh of a second. You could divide a second into 11 parts. That's a lava mata. So that much association with the great soul, it actually can bring one to the path, path of perfection. So then you might say, well, you know, I've been associating with a lot of great souls. But I'm not, you know, purified yet. What happened? Maybe that's a, that verse is just an exaggeration. Just to begin you to associate again. Yeah. You know, so, you know, the Shastras are just eulogies. But no, that same question appeared in the life of Srila Prabhupada when he was asked, Prabhupada, we're associating with you for so long, but we're, we're still not to that, we're not purified. And Prabhupada gave an interesting answer. He said, when the wood is wet, it doesn't ignite. So what he was saying is that in the association of great souls, one has to hear continually. And at a certain point, you'll dry out. We're a little wet yet. <laughs> and until we get to the point of drying out, then then, the, then we ignite with that lava mantra at 1 11th of a second. So it's a continuous process of associating and hearing from great souls and at the same time, have the mood of service. Because by hearing, we get inspired for service. That is the, per that is the process of devotional service. The hear in itself is purifying. But then again, as that purification takes place, then the natural proclivity of the soul's nature is, I want to serve. I want to do something to, to serve the devotees, to serve the Lord. Because if we don't, then we do it for the material energy. You can't stop serving. Service is, is a natural pr propensity, even in the material world. People are serving in different ways. And the employee is serving his boss. And the children or the parents are serving their children. Sometimes the children serve the parents. Not all. <laughs> You know, you know, it takes a little time to, for them to get it. But the, 
we keep trying. And uh, yeah, so we see on different levels, there are all relationships all based on the idea of service. Of course, service in the material world is motivated by personal gain. Wherein devotional service, even if it's motivated by personal gain, that personal gain is to actually make progress towards the goal of life. So that personal gain is not a, not a, a disqualification. But higher than that is to serve just to please. Whether I make whether I make progress or not, secondary, just to please the object of who you're serving, Lord of the Lord's devotees, brings about a purification of heart water and, and makes one happy. Happiness comes when we serve and the Lord is pleased by our, our service. He's pleased by our service, immediately you become happy. And you also become a little less attached to material activities and material things. So this, this mood of service is very important. It's like we have this wonderful temple here, and there's so much opportunities for service. So if we come here and we say, my dear Dronacharya, let me do service, and I'll show you the list of things you can do. You can choose one of the 150 things that need to be done. <laughs> so every temple has so many opportunities for us to have service. And that is the purpose of the temple. Prabhupada said, I could have began this movement underneath the tree and just chanted Hare Krishna, but nobody would have came. The temple is to bring devotees together, to worship the Lord in that mood, and to have an opportunity to perform service to the Lord and to the Lord's devotees both. So a temple is very important as it gives us a complete holistic uh, way by which we can develop our Krishna consciousness. Just to chant Hare Krishna is the essence of our spiritual practice. But if we don't develop a mood of service along with chanting, our chanting will never really develop beyond a certain point. As Srila Prabhupada said, that if you're simply chanting Hare Krishna and you're not doing anything else engaged as part of the process, then he said you're cooking with smoke. That means that you can, you can cook your food with smoke, but it'll take you 300 years if you want to wait that long for breakfast, lunch. So the idea is to understand that the process centers around the activities of devotional service in the mood of serving. Because that's our nature. And if we don't use that nature, we use it for material life. It's just the way it is. You can't stop that propensity to serve. And Prabhupada said, even if a person in the world doesn't have any service externally, they keep a dog or a cat serve. Or even if that happens, they serve their own mind. <laughs> So their mind tells them what to do and they, they obey, yes, master mind. Thank you very much for giving me some services. <laughs> so yeah, so that is the way the activities are. Everything is centered around the mood of service. So those who are actually on the progress towards perfection are always eager and are always engaged in devotional service. And of course, that manifests in different varieties, but that is the mood. The devotee likes to serve. The devotee is eager for service. And the devotee wants to serve in the best way. So that's why we have the spiritual master. We have the authorities in the temple to give us direction by how we can actually serve it in a way that will be beneficial for everyone, along with our own progress. Like that. We can go into the park and just give prasadam to the pigeons. And that's service too. But there might be more important service to do, to, do that, to do that. So that's why we always need to work under some type of authority in order to keep our direction, at least for some time until we actually get involved nicely with regulated devotion service. When, we, when uh, I was trained in devotional service, we were always taught that every minute, every second, we should be doing something. 
in devotional service. And if there was nothing to do, chant Hare Krishna. <clears throat> so we were told that if you leave one second or one moment outside of devotional service, Maya could capture you in that one second. And Prabhupada also makes that point in that uh, that Krishna's, if you look straight forward, Krishna's there. But if you look up, sideways, down, backwards, there's Maya. She's uh, all in the other directions. Krishna's in one direction. But you have to keep our focus on Krishna by keeping our attention on the mood of service. How can we answer? And when you practice that, you start to see how you can serve in the best possible. So the great souls, they're always thinking how to serve in such a way that other people benefit by whatever service they do. In other words, they're in the mood of giving Krishna consciousness to others, in the mood of serving those living entities. And of course, that, that is the foundation by which the whole movement expands itself more and more to reach out to the conditioned souls or reaching out even to the devotees in general in the mood of bringing them to a higher platform of Krishna consciousness. That's our, that's our actually our, our satisfaction in Krishna consciousness. If we're only worried about our own spiritual life, that's all right. But as Prabhupada says, uh, we won't make very much advancement we'll make advancement up to a certain point. And, but then when we actually give Krishna consciousness to others, then we're under the special mercy of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, who came to give Krishna consciousness to the whole world. And Mahaprabhu, he writes, so he speaks, it's mentioned in the ninth chapter of the Adi Lila, Chaitanya Charitamrita. He says, I have a whole warehouse full of beautiful uh, varieties of very tasty fruit. And I am tasting that fruit and it's so sweet. And I want to distribute that fruit to others, but I'm only one person. How much can I do? So please taste these fruits yourself and then make them your distribution program. In other words, what is that fruit? The fruits of love of God. And when you give Krishna, you get Krishna. If you try to get Krishna, it's really hard. <laughs> but when you give Krishna, it becomes easy. And Krishna becomes easily available. Of course, uh, we can do that in different ways. How do we do that? Is a, and there's a variety of ways. Therefore, our outreach or preaching, we call it teaching, preaching, outreach, uh, showing kindness to other living entities. Give me a very remote example how Srila Prabhupada illustrated that one time. This happened in Europe many when Prabhupada was here. There was one lady, and this is at a time when we practically had no congregation. So she had heard about our movement. She read, got some books and was reading. She got kind of excited and wanted to come to the temple. And when she came, uh, she was dressed in the way she liked to dress, which was, you know, a lot of makeup, lipstick, hair up in the air, and mini skirt. Funny bones. <laughs> and so the devotees, you know, they got a little nervous when she came in. And they, you know, politely said, you know, we very happy you're here, but you can't dress like that when you come into the temple. <laughs> and then she listened, but she didn't change. She kept coming the same way. <laughs> and the devotees decided to get a little bit more forceful. And they heavied her out. <laughs> so at one point she said, I'm not coming. They don't want me. <clears throat> She wasn't going to change the way she looked. So then, right not long after that, Prabhupada was scheduled to come to that temple. And she also heard, she said, Oh, let me go one more time and meet their spiritual teacher. So it was a program, and Prabhupada had come. <clears throat> and he sat down, and he was just getting ready to begin his lecture. And she walks in, same way, <clears throat> mini skirts, you know. You know, all kinds of makeup, hair up, 
And she's walking in and she's looking for a place to sit. And Prabhupada noticed her and he says, Oh, thank you very much for coming. You look very nice today. <laughs> and she did, she was completely, you know, um, you know, flabbergasted. She couldn't understand why everybody else is criticizing me. But this is so nice. He likes me. <laughs> and then she sat down and listened to the lecture. And that night she went back. And she took up all her makeup and she came back to the temple dressed differently. She said, well, if this pleases you, then I'll come like this. It was Prabhupada, he reached her heart. He appreciated her as a soul and not so much for her external appearance. Uh, that would, that's preaching. That's an example of how, of course, just to show kindness and be, show attention to people in general in a very you know, personal way, is a very good way to uh, attract people to our Krishna consciousness. In fact, it's even more potent than sometimes uh, the other man means way in which we do. Because in the material world, nobody's really, I mean, people are nice to each other so they can get something. Generally, that's the program. But devotees are just, they have that quality of wanting to show kindness to others by encouraging them come closer to Krishna. That's the devotees are like that. So that's an example of how one can preach simply by you know, taking the time in a personal way to talk to people and to encourage them at a very personal level. And then when they get more involved, then you start to introduce the books and the chanting and like that. And that's how Prabhupada began the movement. He did everything gradually. Because he knew if he gave us everything at once, there would be nobody coming. <laughs> and his whole thing, just like when Prabhupada was first started the movement in uh, 26 Second Avenue, he was having a regular weekly program, three nights a week. And he would give a little Bhagavad Gita class. And then before that, he would cook. And then at the end of the class, he would, they would have a kirtan. And he would serve out. And then he uh, would uh, serve out to all the devotees. He would cook it, he would also serve it. And then after everything was done, then they all, everybody left and Prabhupada would clean up. And so one time when Prabhupada was cleaning up, some two young men stayed back a little bit and they came up and they said, Swamiji, can we help you clean? <laughs> And Prabhupada said, I was waiting for someone to ask. <laughs> he wouldn't ask because he wanted everyone to feel comfortable and not place upon them any obligations. But then by their own, by his own, you know, personal presence, people became attracted and wanted to do something. So that was Prabhupada. He attracted us simply by the way he presented himself. And whenever there was an opportunity, devotees would come forward. And Prabhupada, after a while, started to explain, we need to do this and that. And devotees were more eager at that time. So like that, this is a little lesson for the leaders, <laughs> for new people anyway. But people like to serve anyway, because that's the nature. When people, some people can't wait to get an opportunity to serve. And so when you give them that opportunity, they really feel happy. So that's our movement. And again, another major point in this particular class is association. Um, we should be careful when we associate with the external energy and non-devotees because their value systems and what they consider to be important in life is uh, completely contrary to what devotees understand and actually real values, real. So their whole program is to enjoy the material energy. So when you're associating with the material energy and then the non-devotees don't associate with them, but how do you do that? Give them your association. And if you can't do that, don't take theirs. Prabhupada said association means affection for. 
if you de develop affection for the non-devotees, then you start, then they start offering their what's important in their life, and then pretty soon you find yourself in a very awkward situation. Because they don't even want to go to parties and talk about girls, do other things that we are running away from. So we have to be very careful. But if you can give them your association by giving them an opportunity to come closer to Krishna, just like devotees, sometimes they work and they bring prasadam to their workplace, distribute it to their fellow employees. That's nice. So there's different ways that we can offer some association, but the main thing is if you can't do that, then be very careful not to take their association. So affection should be for devotees and not for devotees. But you might say, well, I have some relatives that are non-devotees. What do I do? Try to make them devotees <laughs> if you can. But you, when it comes to relatives, you can somehow distance yourself from that because they always want to pull you back into your old ways. And they don't see the change. And after some time, in certain cases, there is a transformation, and that they also recognize that. But initially, they're always seeing you as their relative, and they see you in the, always in the material way. So you have to be careful of that. Because associate, associate, association is everything. When Srila Prabhupada was asked, what is the most important thing in Krishna consciousness? Prabhupada said there are three most important things. He said association, association, association. He wanted to make a point. Yeah, so association is really, and there's an old saying, tell me who you associate with and I'll tell you who you are. So um, you should always associate with devotees and associating with devotees means associating in the mood of service. We can accept service or it has an opportunity to give service. If we accept service, that's nice. It gives a chance for a person to serve. But a devotee wants to reciprocate and also offer some service. So it's both give and take. Okay, so we're up past, past the hour here. Any questions, comments? Yes, Mataji. Nice to see your family here. Very happy to see you. Your son plays a great Verdunga. He's really good. Last night I was really battling the Verdunga player. I couldn't, he couldn't follow me. And I was thinking I needed a good Verdunga player. So he came this morning and made me feel good. He really wanted to come yesterday. But because we were not on time, we became so upset. We didn't come. Um, Hare Krishna. Yeah, we forgive you. Maharaj, uh, the question is, times are changing, Maharaj. When, when I was younger, there's more personal interaction with people. Now it has become more you know, to the screen. So sometimes as devotees, uh, we feel that I have chanted my 16 rounds and uh, so I have taken care of my devotional commitment and as far as association, you know, when I take associate, what I'm trying to understand is the association we get from people on the screen. How dangerous is that? I may not be associated as Personally, that but how about just you know in terms of watching news or you know video games or shopping or whatever? So is that not association? And how dangerous is that association? Well, if it's in if it's in a, a business like adventure, then you just do your business. It's like when you go to the store, you give the shopkeeper his money and he gives you the. You know, you don't ask him about his, you know, personal life. 
Or you might talk about something, but you never should get get beyond a certain point because you never know find yourself in an awkward situation. So and there is an association simply by in order to take care of business. So we do that. If you have to maintain a family, obviously you have to deal with the external energy and people who are of that character. So you just do your business and move on. That's so that's not contaminating unless you open up a relationship and develop an attraction for that relationship. Then you should be, you could be find yourself in an awkward situation. Because yeah, their values are different. So you have to be careful with that. We're friendly, but not beyond a certain point. The devotees are friendly to everybody. We're friendly to the non also. But we don't get too much involved in their life. I don't know that. I would stay the same one in terms of not interacting with someone, but watching things happening outside. Is that also counted as association? Yeah. Yeah, you're taking in that. Yeah. Why would you watch it if you're not interested in it? Yeah, we are interested. That's the point. I mean, they were not in Curiosity killed the cat. Yeah, we have so many things that we can be use our time for that is, you know, beneficial. But a lot of the same things that we do, they they also do the same things they do. We do we do it by connecting everything. Which Prabhupada talked about politics, sociology, economics, <laughs> war. Girls. He talked about every subject, but he connected everything to Krishna. If you can do that, then you can see how Krishna is the foundation and the the connection to everything that happens. Try to see Krishna or connect everything ultimately to Krishna. And that's not hard. When you understand behind the scenes, Krishna is conducting everything through his energies. Through the material energy, he puts it in place and it works in a certain way. Through the spiritual energy, he's doing it directly. Yeah, so yeah, avoid that. Yes, my busy. Very deep. I I wanted to share with you, like my experience also. You were bringing up um, family and having affection for people that aren't devotees, and then also hearing them and hearing about their life and their self. My my experience is that like I'll call my dad. What is that? I'll call my dad on the phone. Oh. For example, if in the beginning of our conversation, I just ask him, like, what's going on? You know, what's what's new? Like, what's going on with the family? Oh, how's that going? And he'll share drama. He'll share, like, things that are going wrong. And things, you know, and then, um, and I'll listen, 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 so that he feels, like, open hearted. And then that's when I say, oh, wow, oh, you know, if that's going on, like, we need to pray. Or I start to bring, he's very young. Uh, Philosophical, and he appreciates that I'm a devotee. So then I can bring it back to Krishna, but after some time. Of that's good. I mean, that's beneficial. If you start off with, you know, telling the chant Hare Krishna, the first thing you might say, I'm busy right now. <laughs> <laughs> Something else to do. Yeah, so that's, that's fine with family members. But if they're trying to take you away from you, then try to avoid that. But if he's favorable, that's very good. And if you can make him favorable by taking time and sharing even the, the mundane things with him, then that will begin make him see that maybe you know, what my daughter has is something I can also 
gain from. Yeah. I also see this with them and preaching to non devotees like that aren't with family, but it's giving them a chance to like yeah. what's going on in your life and then inch by inch. Yeah. That, yeah, but be careful with certain people. Sometimes the inches come up to the yards. Yeah, you have to be careful with certain people. You have to make that that uh, discrimination ahead of time. And if you find it going in the wrong direction, you just change the subject. If you can do that. Or you can excuse yourself and get out of there. Thank you. Hey, just, uh, anyone else? Any more sadhus? See, all the, all the ladies of the sadhus. Come on, guys, you got any questions? So you had mentioned that um, when we engage in full devotional service, it becomes as studies. Yeah. In the chapter. Yeah. What, what, is, what is that? 1426. Vamchayo Bhakti Yogena By engaging in devotional, full devotional service, not falling down in any circumstance, one transcends the three modes of material nature and comes to Brahman platform. Yeah. That's the verse that, uh, you know, uh, gives that point clearly. Yeah, so I was wondering about that, how even for any conditioned state, we can, on the prairie, we can do pure devotional service. It's just that we might get distracted again, get off my head again. So one, the Buddha was explaining the difference between pure devotional service and is different. I was looking for that. Yeah, there's two kinds of pure devotees. One who is acting purely, and one who has reached the purified platform. The ones who is acting purely means they're following the process perfectly, and they have no desire other than to please Krishna and to engage in devotional service. But they still have material desires. But they don't give any credit nor any attention to those. And if they continue in that way, they can reach the perfected level. So one can practice pure devotional service even though one is not a pure devotee. And, but you have to be careful also in the fact that, they, that as long as you have these material desires, they may appear and somehow or other. Uh, divert your attention away. So you have to be careful of that, and be aware of that. Yeah. Anything else? Okay, how about the guys online? They get any chance to ask questions? Let's see here. Is anybody out on the Zoom class that's still here? Have any questions? Please just unmute yourself and go ahead. Yes, go ahead, Kalpesh Prabhu. So, like uh, my question related to us, uh, often uh, we have a lot of interaction in this society. How do we make sure that we don't become in? It, uh, develop any animal to that was my question what was the can, can you restate the question briefly uh, yeah sure so working with anyone uh, one should dealing animity with anyone else or towards other my question, you know. It was it was a little bit choppy. 
Yeah, you're, you're saying picking up. Do you mind typing your question, Kalpesh Prabhu? In the meantime, uh, but the Max has typed a question. How do we develop the proper mood in sadhana and seva? Well, is the foundation by which all activities begin and develop. Enthusiasm means to endeavor with intelligence. Rupa Goswami gives that point in the instructions. You should be enthusiastic. That means you should intelligently apply the activities in devotion to service. So uh, if you're chanting Hare Krishna, you should understand, well, I may have to understand how I can perfect my chanting by applying certain principles in the, in the process of chanting, such as chanting with attention, Chanting in an environment that is uh, conducive to uh, absorption rather than distraction. To uh, chant at an early time during the day and not throughout the day. That's it. So in other words, one can also see how to put quality into our devotional activities. And by doing that, that's an element of our enthusiasm. We want to make it nicer. We want to make it more effective. Anything we do, both in our service and in our sadhana. Not just get it done. And getting it done is, is there, but we want to do it in such a way that it's nicely done, with attention, with devotion. Then uh, that means to really apply that enthusiastic approach to it. I'm eager to chant in the morning, not like I get on, oh God, here we go again, 16 rounds, climbing mountain, Kilimanjaro, and then we get to the top. <laughs> no, you should always say, oh, I am on. The, this is my favorite time of the day. I get to, get to associate with Krishna through chanting his holy name. So if we're not enthusiastic and eager for our activities of devotional service, we'll do it in a mechanical way or begrudging way. Or not even do it at all. But we should have that enthusiasm. So how does enthusiasm develop? Through understanding, through knowledge, and through and through activity that all of these activities are actually uh, bringing me to the perfection of Bhakti, devotional service. Reading Bhagavatam, associating with devotees, worshiping the deity, even taking prasadam. All of these things should be done in the right consciousness. Not just to get them done. Kalpesh, did you write your question in the chat? If so, Mother Shobarade, can yeah. you read it off? Yeah. And uh, Mother Scarlett also has her hand up. Um, but the question Kalpesh Prabhu is asking is, it is related to the association. While we interact with a variety of people, how do we make sure we are not developing envious or making enemies? Vidya Vinaya Sampane Gavi Havis Hastini Suni Chaiva Supakecha. Pandita Samudarsh. Well, a devotee, at least one who is, I mean, this is an advanced stage, but one should try to see that all living beings are part and parcels of Krishna. And every day, every living entity is dear to Krishna. So we should treat everyone in the right way, not be envious or be intolerant. In other words, we should develop, practice those qualities that are conducive to uh, both association and service. If, we're, if we feel envy, we should just immediately throw it out of the mind and not dwell on it. We realize it has nothing to do with me. It's just simply my material coverings. That's all. Soul is pure. The soul is not envious. But we're acting, we're acting with the conditioned mind. That way we, we identify with the conditioned mind and we think that's the reality.
When you see a person, you can look at them from two angles. You can see their good qualities, and you can see their, uh, their uh, the other qualities, the negative qualities. It depends on what you want to focus on. You have a choice. Look for the good qualities, and then the other qualities will disappear from the consciousness. Everyone has both these qualities, some good qualities and some qualities that may not be really pleasing. But of course, in certain cases, if a person's qualities are not very good at all, you, maybe you want you won't want to associate in that in that environment. But you shouldn't criticize, you just just in order to protect yourself from being dragged down in the wrong consciousness, you avoid that association. We'll take one more question. Um, Mother Scarlett. Hi, Krishna, and thank you for the class today. Um, devotional service, should, should the devotional service be asked of one to do it, or can a person do devotional service without anyone asking? Well, when you're a little baby, you have to be told what to do. When you grow up, you start to... Yeah. So, yeah, when you begin, you might have to, well, do this. All right, do that. But when you start getting a little bit connected with the process of devotional service, you start thinking of how to do things. And you also offer your own time and energy in doing in doing devotional service. In the beginning, we might, we might have to be told, but after some time, then we understand, hey, this service is nice. I'm doing more. We start thinking. And the, the devotees who are fixed in Krishna consciousness, they're not only thinking of how to do service, but they're also thinking how to get other people to do service. <laughs> Thank you, Scarlett. Can I ask a, a, a follow-up question? Thank you so much. Um, such a pleasure to have you here in these two days. Uh, this is the beginning of the birthday of on the list when you come here to America. It's the city of brotherly love. That's what they say. What, what, are, your, what are your travel plans right now? Will you be back in America? Uh, I leave for Canada today for Toronto Rock Yatra on the weekend. After that, I'm back in Chicago for just one day. And then I'm off to Europe. <laughs> And Europe, and then London first, and Europe, and then uh, India. India till January, end of January. So we'll be back next year, I guess, if I'm still around. Never know. Are you going to buy a Yeah, I. I'll be there probably in December, end of December, and through a half, probably half December and half January, one month in my life. Mayapur, yeah. Prabhupada yeah. said, Mayapur, that is our home. Thank you, Maharaj. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Thank you for the opportunity. Thank you to the audience who tuned in online. I know it was a little rough at first, but I think you got it going. So thank you for bearing with us. The question, the attention. So I'm going to send you to Maharaj. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.